Hi, my name is Bob Grunier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So, welcome to Takaaki Matsumoto, Vortex-like Patterns and Eddy Currents in Electronuclear Collapse. It's the 18th of May 2021 when I'm recording this and the image here on the first slide is of a number of images that were shared by Takaaki Matsumoto at ICCF 7 in Vancouver 1998 that's nearly 23 years ago as I record this. Now on this slide you'll see a number of things that I've shared before and this is of the Lion Reactor. The Lion Reactor is something like this and it has a alumina tube with an iron rich bolt put into it which goes down a good length in the tube to two and a half inches and it is sealed with some what's called Parkamov cement <laughs> uh, but it's a kind of uh, different ceramic type cement cement and that seals it up and it has some diamonds in there that were in nickel as a abrasive by 3M called diapads and they were heated for uh, about a week at 200 degrees or so and then dunked immediately into deuterium and then placed in here. It has a heat coil and that goes around the outside of these tubes and this tube here is made of fused quartz and so that insulates the heat coil from the reactor and around the core of the reactor there's also copper wire. But this fused quartz that I'm pointing the mouse to here, uh, uh, part the way down it uh, and in line with the solenoid and the B field of the solenoid, there is this structure. And so this is viewed from the inside and this is a crack in the fused quartz. And so whatever this was, was burrowing from the inside to the outside. It didn't quite make it through. And this is viewed here from the outside. And it is, in my view, this magneto hydrodynamic structure. And it has two, and there also seems to be some flow between the two here. And there's this 120 degree crack here that I've pointed out in the past. And the fact that these are kind of like hexagonal shape and there is a kind of spin field around which is rotational and there is these kind of uh, figure of eight here on the center and uh, there are substructures in there around the core substructure and as you can see this overlays now i've talked about this quite a lot in previous presentations and in a separate this was in line one and in a separate reactor uh, i believe there was this uh, or certainly in the lion reactor there were four lions that we had access to and again this is a counter rotating vortex it would appear it is self similar there are smaller structures inside which are like the overall structure um, but you can see how it comes into a pinch point here and round here and there seemed to be something that came from this side came over and hit this part of the Cantal wire and there is a deposit on there and I've talked about that in the past. Anyway these uh, images both this one and this one were shared at the beginning of 2018 when I was looking at the various Lion reactors and it wasn't until August 2020 that I came across the Solin patent which was submitted in October 1992 and awarded to the Russian Solin in 1997, as I understand it. And in there, he had this uh, image of the uh, aftermath of the quantum coherent reactor that he had uh, developed. And it is these figure of eights, these kind of like overlaid magnetohydrodynamic structures here and here which are the most obvious which more closely match the uh, structure here and here and um, this for me was hugely fascinating because this meant that um, we had an author from uh, Russian research who had concluded and had observed transmutation and the structures that were doing the work were these and they are effectively exactly equivalent in my view to the structures that we saw on the various line reactors. Now there are 
versions of these at different scales. These were just the biggest examples. And again, this one was in line with the B field, and this was across the B field, but the B field was going through here. So the B field was going through here, and the B field was going through here in this case. So there was a relationship with the magnetic field of uh, the solenoid, and I believe, therefore, this is a magnetohydrodynamic structure. And then I discovered Solin had seen the exact same thing. Now, the subject of this presentation isn't the Lion Reactor or Solin's work, but it's actually the work of Taka Akimatsumoto. And I had seen his papers in October 2018, and when I saw this structure uh, on the inside of the supernova reactor, this is a reactor that was produced uh, uh, by a group uh, uh, and uh, spearheaded by Dr. George Eagley. And I decided to use some uh, optical micros microscopy to have a look on the inside of the reactor to see if anything had impinged upon it. And I found quite a lot of examples of various um, unusual structures. And this is one of those. And the reason I found this so significant was that this um, it had this hexagon structure around the outside, this sort of field structure. And then these very clear demarked areas uh, on the inside. Again, a hexagon type structure in the center, this area here, and then this kind of subdivided area. And why this immediately stuck out to me, and I got quite excited, was that I had seen something nearly identical by Takaaki Matsumoto in his paper, Cold Fusion Experiments with Ordinary Water and Thin Nickel Foil. Uh, and this was published by Takaaki Matsumoto in 1993. Now, uh, unfortunately, you can't go to SciHub and look at this paper right now because uh, SciHub is being taken down, uh, which is a great shame for science. And uh, let's hope something can be resolved there. But anyway, if you go to the Lena Events database of quantum heats, uh, um, MFMP's uh, Lena Reaction Calculator, da Calculator database, which you can find at nanosoft.co.nz, and in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see uh, Lena Events Database. You can look up Matsumoto and there should be some links uh, to his papers and you should be able to gain access to this paper. Anyway, so this was the thing that I had in my mind and uh, this was the structure seen on the inside of the uh, supernova reactor. I've just made it grayscale. But essentially, almost every aspect, you know, this little chunk up here, this little chunk up here, this slightly larger chunk, I mean, it, it, it was almost comical the way everything uh, uh, matched in terms of the distance here, this distance, and, and so forth. It's, it's really quite amazing. Now, on the Takaaki Matsumoto, it didn't show the larger outside area. I mean, you could argue that this may be it, but he did certainly see a lot of hexagonal plates being formed on various experiments. Anyway, so this, this got me thinking uh, the other day when I was thinking, well, if we are seeing these kind of structures in some of Takaaki Matsumoto uh, experiments, why would we not expect to see these kind of structures? in his experiments. And I looked at the book of his collected works that he had sent me via show. Thank you, show in Japan, and thank you, Takaaki Matsumoto. Uh, the yellow book, which I've been talking about, and hopefully that, along with his collected works, I can get put into a book for uh, other people to be able to look at. Uh, that, um, I, I thought I'd dig into there and see if I could find anything that showed these kind of uh, magnetohydrodynamic structures. And the uh, nearing the end of the book, there was this collected work um, uh, of images that he had distributed in 1998 at, at that International Conference on Cold Fusion. And it was referring to uh, experiments that he had done in 1997 in electronuclear collapse. And these are really, really rather simple experiments. And I hope to work with Takaaki Matsumoto to get um, maybe some more imagery or a good uh, diagram 
um, of precisely what was done in these experiments. But he says here, the experiments shown in table one, this table I've copied here, were carried out with a thin lead metal wire electrode, diameter of one millimeter, inserted in ordinary water solution. Copper plates were used for a reference box electrode as well as for monitoring plates. Discharges were made under a pulsed AC uh, uh, alternating current mode of 120 volts. The products on the copper plates were examined by a scanning electron microscope, SEM, and the elements were analyzed with energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, EDX. Okay, so um, there was a copper plate in here, uh, uh, potentially that is one of the electrodes, and that needs to be confirmed. Uh, AC, that means it, it, there's no specific um, anode or cathode. Uh, there's, uh, I mean, I think I think in uh, Japan there are some 60 hertz and some 50 hertz regions. I don't know whether they the 60 hertz have 120 volts. Maybe they do, um, but certainly I think it's 240 or, or 232 or whatever it is for the 50 hertz. And maybe up in um, Sapporo where he lived and worked I think potentially they had this 120 volts uh, 60 Hertz so this may actually be because of that um, he had uh, this uh, particular main supply it may go through a, 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 a normal uh, sort of transformer potentially so um, this needs to be clarified but overall the experiment is very simple uh, and the experiment that we're going to look at a couple of images in question is um, this one S70 and it was with potassium hydroxide solution 1.5 mol per liter um, and he had uh, the power on the AC 120 volt power on uh, for 80 milliseconds and it was off for 20 seconds and then he did a number of shots uh, four, four shots so I read that to mean 4 times 80 milliseconds with a, a, a dwell between each one of 20 seconds. Okay, so that is the parameter of the experiment as was conducted. And here is the absolute stunning uh, uh, item that he found in his reactor. And it's this torus, a lead torus as he describes it. Now. Um, it does appear to have a kind of hexagonal distorted structure here. So it looks like it's maybe squashed on this uh, plane. First, Firstly, you're looking at it uh, with perspective. Uh, I think this is in the foreground a little bit compared to over here. And it would appear that these areas are squashed. But as we saw on the Evo that had striked the large one that had struck, uh, struck the uh, aluminium fracture sample of John Hutchison. Um, these things can distort when they're moving around. They they have some sort of um, flexibility. So um, now, is this hollow? Is it is it kind of like a donut that's hollow? Um, I don't know. It's not ex exactly clear. If we uh, say that this is D, um, then is this D4D? It's it's practically D4D this way. It's not D4D this way, but if this is squashed and uh, this side and this side are pushed towards the center, causing this distorted hexagon, uh, perhaps these were further out uh, before. So maybe this does follow the D4D rule. I don't know. Um, but uh, it is, in my view, a distorted hexagon structure in the core um, and a donut overall shape. Is it possibly a D4D structure? I don't know. There are vortex-like patterns, and this is something that he noted. So I went into his uh, book and, and thought, can, can we find something in here um, that uh, is close or something similar to what we had observed in... Um, various other experiments like the lion experiments that later were to be found in Solin and uh, this was what I came up with and and this is figure six it's a lead ring with vortex like patterns and this image is here and there's a close-up image which I'm going to show you tiny 
lead grains were generated in which vortex-like patterns and eddy currents seemed to take an important role. This is spectacular to me. Uh, this really um, points to the fact that um, uh, this is all all the same thing and you can see these uh, vortex structures here, 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 here and it's very interesting because one side definitely is almost always different to the other and then there's there's more than uh, just um, uh, two in certain places and we'll, we'll see that later. The first one uh, um, uh, that I want to talk about is this but before we do there are pears and hearts or, or what I call pretzels so I think we have a pretzel here we have a pretzel here or a heart and we have one in the center here this might be one over here uh, uh, who can say but we're gonna have a look at those a little bit closer and um, before I do that, I'm going to have a look at this, and this is looks to me a bit like a truncated hexagon, i.e. Uh, these sides are longer than these ones. And we actually saw, just to tie it back to the first uh, experiment where I saw a one-for-one -one, uh, correlation, was uh, this one uh, in the supernova reactor and this structure, and this was with one of his other experiments, this essentially a one-to-one correlation in the structure um, I uh, I found something also within the uh, supernova marks in fact there's many because uh, for instance we've got a, a pentagon type structure here on it is on one side of a, a pair um, but there's a hexagon here which is on one side of a pair um, uh, we have a pentagon here uh, but this is this truncated one so let's let's go and have a look at that um, here and so this is again from the supernova reactor and what I've done is I've just taken the uh, structure from here and I have uh, just rotated it and removed the distortion and so we have uh, this same kind of structure here going on and th there's an internal structure just like we have here and then there is this boundary and then this external area so I'm going to play the various different lighting uh, I had on this particular structure so um, I think that straight away we have a very very good analog uh, between what was observed on this piece of lead this torus of lead and on the inside of the supernova reactor. Now, zooming in uh, to the left bottom quadrant of the tor torus-like structure, uh, there are several features I want to pull out here. So firstly, we have overlapping vortex pairs. So you have this vortex here and this vortex structure here, and it's overlapping. Lapping. And just like we saw in the John Hutchison um, bull burn sample, where we had um, that kind of a uh, quest, not question mark, quote mark, or, or a kind of yin-yang, half yin-yang shape, there are the little balls inside, periodic balls. Um, whether that's the uh, same type of feature, I don't know. But uh, it, the, the way this overlays and the fact that it has um, this side is very different from this side, uh, this is something we'll see quite a lot of. Uh, for instance, if you look at what I call this figure of eight structure here, this side is very different, but you can see it's kind of like connected, and we have a one, two, three, four, five. Is that six? Uh, it looks like it might be six. Um, but this is almost the same as this one on this side and this one is the same as this one on this side. They're just a different scales. And if we look here, I'm saying 50% 50, 50 in surface spheres. Look, we have a 50% surface in uh, sphere, 50% in surface sphere, 50% in sur surface uh, sphere. This is, in my view, uh, almost like th this was a particular piece of coherent matter, a micro ball lightning in its own right. And because of their magnetic structure, they tend to sit 50% in and 50% out 
of uh, the metal and I've shown you this on so many different samples but we, we've seen this on um, the quartz in Lion, we've seen this in the um, uh, Parkamov 225 day reactor uh, and so forth. But anyway, the other thing here is we've got hemispherical holes. Here, here is one example of a hemispherical hole. And it could, it almost suggests that these things, whilst they look like they're half on the surface, they might be half in the surface. They might be half in the surface. And so is this one half in and half out of the surface and maybe some sort of dynamic change happened and, and this popped out? My question is about these spheres, is if you were to cut them in half, would they be hollow like the spheres that are observed by uh, some of the Russian uh, groups like Anatoly, Anatoly Klimov? Anyway, um, that putting that aside, uh, we've also got hearts and pretzels here. So uh, I'm calling this uh, a heart, kind of shape, heart shape here. And uh, it also has two sides. This is clearly kind of like a hexagon on this side, uh, equivalent uh, to um, this maybe on this side. And this maybe is equivalent to this one or possibly uh, this one, uh, but uh, mirrored. But anyway, it looks like there's kind of nearly three structures here. But is it like we saw in the ultra experiment um, when... Um, uh, we got a pair coming together they kind of twisted up into a knot that ended up with this structure down the bottom don't know but let's have a look at um, the kind of structures here and compare them to other work so these are the structures that we see produced extremely quickly in ultra experiments now this is uh, a hydrodynamic structure um, is it magnetohydrodynamic? I don't know, but it's definitely hydrodynamic. It is in water and it's got vortices and all kinds of things going on. Uh, is this the same kind of thing as Solin is seeing? It looks a little bit tighter uh, in the Solin uh, work. But um, if we look here, we have a kind of, is this hexagonal? This is certainly hexagonal with a hole in the middle and uh, this ridge around the outside. This is hexagonal here with a hole in the middle. And one side is definitely different from the other. One side is definitely different from the other. One side is definitely different from the other. And if you recall, this is this goes down into a pit. This is a pit. And these are peaks. Okay? Well, this has got a pit, and this has got a pit. And these don't really appear to have a, a peak, but it might be something to do with the overall coherent structure. Doesn't allow for a peak to form at this point. Whereas on this, uh, it, it does, if it is uh, similar in the magnetohydrodynamic sense as the hydrodynamic sense. Anyway, uh, the fact that these are occurring across different systems and even within the same system, uh, Solin has multiple, this has got multiple, and you can create this every day of the week, even as a five-year-old, and this has got multiple even on the same little piece of lead. Uh, I think this is quite fascinating. And if we go to the polymer that was exposed at a distance via through a gap of polymer and air in the echo work you'll notice also that we have these uh, what look a bit like paired structures one bigger than the other uh, and what I noticed when I was looking at this so for instance if you look at this one and this one this one has a big white outside and a little black spot in the middle this has a black uh, area on the outside and a and a little white area in the middle and you get, for instance, here, you've got this thing in the middle and then a black area, then a white area. And over here, it's just got a black area in the middle and a white area around the outside. And is this a hexagon? I don't know. I think we've got a blow up of this area. Um, but is this, is this a, the effect of coherent matter and it produces this wave structure? I don't know. Is this a kind of like heart shape? I don't know. Um, but maybe it is. Uh, certainly we have one side that is different from the other one side that is different from the other is this feeding into something here I don't know is this related to this I don't know but uh, I believe they probably are and I believe that what we see in these systems uh, being same same but different um, is something that we can also draw uh, uh, 
um, maybe some parallels with what's going on in here. So I believe that this was caused by a magneto hydrodynamic structure. I believe it was formed uh, by uh, dark mode uh, evos or coherent matter or atomic clusters that got trapped in this plastic and acted upon it. And so this is kind of the figure of eight type comparisons. And here we have a selection, although there's many that I could have chosen from different systems. But uh, this is probably my favorite from the Parkamov uh, 225 day reactor. This reactor produced heat for about seven months, I think over 200 watts average per day or per hour, like all of the time. Um, uh, and in the kilowatts, uh, over a kilowatt uh, at peak. But uh, it has this fluffy carbon, these multiple rings, and this very tight um, bit where it comes in here, and it moves towards a heart shape. Uh, this, uh, it, for my, I've taken these from the uh, Matsumoto lead donut, and I believe we are looking at something that is similar in the kind of magnetohydrodynamic structure that formed it. So. Um, uh, these are two examples here and here are, are what I would consider the structures that are equivalent in the Solin patent. Here we've got one and it kind of there's it, it's like circular here and it's overlaying this but there seems to be some feeding relationship between these two and then this one's kind of off to the side. This one looks like it's a bit overlaying on that or in fact it's overlaying these two. But uh, I, I believe what Solin was trying to draw here in these sketches in 1992 was similar to what Matsumoto observed on this lead sample in 1996 multiply and that these structures are similar to what I observed examining at Magic Sound Lab, that's Alan Goldwater's lab in California this structure here which is three-dimensional so these are very very three-dimensional in terms of uh, their form and what's also interesting is where you see these things are like caught into the structure uh, you also have these little spheres that are kind of caught into the structure now you might think these are kind of like deposited afterwards and they probably are to a certain extent what I can say is I could use the electron gun in Alan Goldwater's SEM to roll this around the surface it was a very uh, um, well held together structure uh, even though it looks like it's just uh, made of rubbish it kind of it held itself together quite well and I could roll it over um, so there we go this this is the figure of eight uh, structure uh, sorry this is the figure of eight structures uh, this is the hearts and pretzels and I want to point out another heart and pretzel uh, pretzel structure which is right in the core which I mentioned earlier uh, here and I believe this is the same kind of structure that we are seeing here. Okay, so uh, that is the uh, lead sample by Takaaki Matsumoto. Uh, here is a final slide uh, where I've got the two bits together and you can see that um, this area over here is an expanded shot of the kind of this area here and um, for me uh, these tiny lead grains uh, which uh, had this uh, vortex like patterns and eddy currents um, these are the kind of topics that I have been discussing for a good while now and um, it was it was it was a, a no surprise and a big surprise uh, uh, it was no surprise that Matsumoto having done so much research on this um, and being very focused on this for a good decade was able to see these things in such beautiful detail almost before anyone else but I would have to say that we have to give although these are some of the best examples that I have seen to date of this effect outside of the Lion reactor I would have to say that uh, Solin with his 1992 pattern uh, really gets uh, should get the credit for identifying these structures first now um, uh, so to just give a summary we saw these uh, magneto hydrodynamic structures in the beginning of 2018 in the various lion reactors 
in August 2020, I found the Serlian pattern, which showed the same structures uh, in the this this form. But uh, also, we found similar structures in the supernova reactor to uh, the work of Takaaki Matsumoto. And I therefore thought, well, I wonder if he's got anything similar to the magnetohydrodynamic structures. And this set of work, which was shared in 1998, that he conducted in 1997, um, simple experiment, lead metal wire with uh, an electrode of diameter of one millimeter, uh, pulsed AC, uh, and not a long experiment, it would appear, produced uh, some beautiful structure structures like this in fact there's many different structures but this one has the clearest examples of this magneto hydrodynamic and uh, um, uh, eddy current type effects and uh, pulling out some examples of this we have this one uh, which is very similar to a structure that's also seen on the inside of the supernova reactor and it has uh, these hemispherical uh, balls which we see in many different experiments, but also uh, holes, which we, I mean, for instance, the, there was a sphere taken out of the diamond in the lion uh, core. Uh, and so there was a hole out of that, but you also saw spheres on the outside of the court. So um, these things you will see in linear experiments. And these uh, figure of eight structures um, we have observed and can uh, anyone can observe uh, with uh, even uh, rudimentary skills in foil in a ultra experiment and that i believe these are hydrodynamic analogs of what we see in this mag magneto hydrodynamic structures uh, that serlin saw in what he calls a quantum coherent reactor capable of uh, nucleon decay for, via new unification of the forces and that we saw something similar in the uh, echo uh, experiment exposure to the echo fuel which was again ultrasonically produced so my belief is quite firm that ultrasonics somehow is able to create coherence that leads to the formation of, of exotic vacuum objects and uh, itonic clusters and all of this kind of gubbins and uh, uh, that can destabilize and, and fly out subunits and they interacted with this plastic and uh, the other type of structure are what I call these hearts or pretzels and these are slightly more complicated uh, structures and uh, I believe Solin also observed these in his quantum coherent reactor and there's an one in the center of the donut here so that is uh, the presentation um, I have for you today. Thank you very much for your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next presentation.